Hey, what's up? Alex here. First tip, we go back to the basic. Smart wall switch versus smart lights. So this can be bulbs or LED light strips, doesn't matter, just smart lights in general. So look at all the lighting feature that you have or plan to have and ask yourself whether you need a switch for it. There's something called Essence and Ambient Lighting. Ambient lights are your main general source of lights. Those are the only lights that will require a wall switch in my opinion. Others like this spotlight you see over here, uh, my TV backlight, the standing lamp at the corner, the light strip behind my desk, the light behind my plant, and even the lights under my top kitchen cabinet. These are considered essence lighting. They are there like a form of decoration. You shouldn't need to intentionally go and switch them on or off. They should be all automated so you don't really need a wall switch for all of them. Another way to tell is whether you want to be able to change the color temperature or be able to dim the lights. If yes, then I'll recommend getting smart lights. I know many of you like to get those uh, fancy and expensive designs that comes with dumb lights and with dimming controls. For those, you can't use a normal light switch to control them, right? Similarly, you can't use a normal smart wall switch to control them because a smart wall switch is only controlling the on and off state. You will need something called a smart dimmer switch in which there are very limited options out there the only one I recommend is Lutron, but they are expensive. Tip number two, wire your smart lights to L. So you know the problem with smart lights is if the power is cut off, the device is considered offline and wouldn't work anymore. So instead of wiring them to L1 or L2, which are your switch buttons, right? Just wire them directly to L. This is where your live wire, the source of electricity, is wired to. This means that the connected device will always receive electricity power and will always be online. Another good point of using smart lights is you can easily group lights together via your smart home app. Within a light group, you can easily adjust brightness, on or off, or any other controls you won't have such flexibility with dumb, dimmable lights. Okay, so wiring to L can also apply to smart fans as well. Same idea, you want them to be always online. Tip number three, use more sensors and buttons. Some people like to promote about having a smart home whereby they can now control it with their mobile phone. That's nonsense, okay? Realistically, that's not convenient at all. Nobody does that at home. Using voice assistant is alright, but for me, I actually seldom use it for device controls anymore. So incorporate more sensors to your setup. For example, if I want to switch on my living room AC, I will have to go ahead and close all the windows and all the room doors anyway, right? You don't want the cold air to escape out. Since I'm not using the service yard door for any purpose, I put a contact sensor there, so I will just go ahead and close the door whenever I want to switch on the AC. Likewise, the AC automatically switches off once I open this door. I also seldom go and physically press my wall switches anymore. Instead, I like to place buttons at convenient places. So with a press of a button, it will automatically switch on my TV, my ceiling fan, as well as the TV backlight. So if it's like very bright in the day like now, I'll press the button and it will then close my living shades. So very easy, press, uh, press and hold and it will automatically open up my shades again. Tip number four, there are some neutral wire that you can easily tap on to your switches. HDB by default does not have neutral wire to all your light switches and it's a lot of work for an electrician to pull neutral wire to every single point. However, there are some points that doesn't require much effort, such as those that are beside your heater switches. Heater switches already have neutral wire up, so you can either ask your electrician or even do it yourself if you are confident enough. Neutral wire are blue in color, just simply do a looping over to your light switches. Those wall power socket also have neutral power over there. So if it's near to the light switch like this over here, the electrician can still do conceal over to the point. So if you're looking to extend your Zigbee network, at the very minimum, you are able to do so at the switches beside your heater switch. Tip number five, smart appliances are preferred. So what smart appliances am I referring to? Things like your AC, water heater, fan, all this. If you don't have any preference, then I suggest as far as possible, get the smart models. 
unless there is a specific brand or model that you die die only want that. So for example, you only like KDK fans, but let's say KDK don't sell smart fans, but it's okay, just go ahead and buy the KDK fan you want. Technically, you still can make them smart using an IR, RF blaster or a switch board. The problem with that is your smart home system does not know the current state of the device. So for example, my AC here is not smart. When I switch it on with my remote, it doesn't know it's on. If it's a smart appliance like my water heater here, when I physically press the on button, it will then show it as on. Without knowing the state, you will have some limitations when you want to set up the automation rules. So let's say if I'm shopping for a new AC now, I'll most likely get a smart AC from Daikin. Tip number six, talking about smart appliances, please choose them wisely. Having a mobile app for a device does not make it smart. Back to the point that I mentioned just now, it is not convenient at all to go and grab your phone, access an app just for that one device. Ask them questions like whether the device can integrate with the smart home system that you're using, what kind of controls are exposed as part of the integration. If they are unable to answer these kind of questions, it really shows how much they know about their own products, not to mention whether they even know what a smart home is about. So for me, it makes no sense to buy products from such a company. Okay, so taking AC as an example, besides the on and off controls, if the integration does not include settings like changing the temperature and fan speed, then at least it should be able to configure scenes and those scenes must be able to sync over to your smart home platform. Tip number seven, water piping for robot vacuum. If you're not aware of the latest tech that is available for robot vacuum, they are now able to hook up to your water pipes to automatically refill the clean water and drain away the dirty water. This is the number one feature that you should look out for when choosing a robot vacuum. For me, I'm not even interested anymore if you ask me to check out a robot vacuum that doesn't have this feature. So plan ahead and try to allocate a spot where you can hide away all the exposed water piping. Okay, so what options do you have as of today? For Dreamy, there are L10S, L20, X30 Ultra, this is X30 Master, and their latest X40. For Ecovex will be the X2 and T30 Pro. For Roborock, there are Q Revo Max V and S8 Max V Ultra, but both models seem to be currently on pre-order. Or if you want to try out something different, there is the SwitchBot S10. I have not tested this yet, so I'm not sure whether it works. Okay, people always like to ask whether they can buy it directly from China Taobao because it's a lot cheaper there. For me, I don't want to risk buying any home appliances that are more than $500 Sing dollars without any warranty support, especially for robot vacuums where there are so many moving parts. Tip number eight, go for motorized curtains or blinds. Between retrofit and moto, if you cannot decide what to get, then I can tell you 100% motorized. They are far more reliable and consistent. Between wired or wireless, although wired is better because you don't need to worry about the battery power and charging it, but you need to factor in the aesthetics whether you are able to hide away the ugly cables. For curtains, since it is easier to hide away the cables, you can go with wired, but remember to have the power socket at the inside of the curtain. If this is using Zigbee, you can also use it to extend your Zigbee network. For blinds, if it's hard to hide away the cables, just go with wireless. If the product allows you to connect to a solar panel, you can also consider that. If not, just charge it once every 3 or 4 months, it's fine actually. Tip number 9 is the wife or family approval factor. You need to remember that everyone in the family is staying in the same smart home as you, but everyone's living habits are different, and you are not setting up the smart home just for yourself. Because of that, there are different use cases and requirements that you kind of need to solve. So for example, my other half has the habit of not switching off the fans and lights every time. So this is something that I will need to figure out a solution for it. Always try to get some feedback after you have implemented something new. Be flexible and open to change things up. Configure a customized dashboard for each of the family member. Teach them the controls. All these small little things can contribute to having a better smart home for everyone. Last final tip, I think this is the most important and it's also something that I have stressed many times in my other videos. Don't rush to buy any smart home devices. Decide on which smart home system you want to use first. A lot of times people will share with me a list of devices they already bought. They ask me how to integrate them together. So for example, uh, I bought Akara switches from China. 
Xiaomi security cameras, Sonos speakers, Prism smart fan, MC2 blinds, Sol Luminaire smart lights. <sighs> okay, then you have to pretty much go with Home Assistant or maybe Homey can also work. Then you realize Home Assistant is too complicated for you, you end up with a bunch of apps. One app will control one device. There are no automation rules configured. In the end, you feel that a smart home is useless for you because those smart home devices are not smart at all. Every smart home system has their own pros and cons. Assess what is important to you, decide on that system. After that, you know exactly what smart home devices to buy already. Alright, that's all the 10 tips from me. If you have any tips to share, please comment below so that everyone in this community can benefit from it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!